argue that there's still a lot of things that remain here. We have not, this is not a solved problem. In fact, there's, there's sort of big, big problems that haven't been solved. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, in my next slide here. So uh, Microsoft uh, is very interested in using C Sharp and, and, and manage applications in, in almost everything they can think of. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of hope to move a lot of functionality into the operating system in a managed way. Um, there's certainly uh, the hope to build a lot of client applications in managed code. So HeadTracks is an example of that. HeadTracks is an internal um, productivity app. It's essentially a, uh, a human resources tool that allows you to sort of see who reports to who and see what their evaluation was, things like that. Um, it's multi-tier, but I'm going to focus on the client in this case, uh, all written in C-sharp. They executed on a 128 megabyte machine, one gigahertz CPU. Uh, and for your information, actually, that's not an uncommon configuration. If you actually go out into the world, you ask, what's, you know, how much memory is on your machine? You find that 128 megabytes is not an uncommon answer. In fact, it's at the high end of what your average person has. Okay? So anybody who says, well, we just have a six gigabyte memory and we're done, you know, you have to think twice about some of these things. Um, but anyway, so this is what happened. They wrote the, uh, they wrote the application C Sharp, um, network interfaces, various uh, database systems, web services, a various em uh, emphasis on security. You have to hide information. You don't want people stealing other people's, uh, you know, uh, compensation information, et cetera. And this is what happened. They built this thing. Uh, the cold start, you know, without having run it before, it took 23 seconds to start up. Okay? And then the second time you ran it, 10 seconds. Okay, so welcome to the world of managed code, right? This is a managed a productivity app, and the question is, well, what's going on there? You know, is this just bad programming or what? Okay, so we're going to look at that more closely. There's a there's a report online. I can point you to it, um, and this is what they did. They had a they had a student over the summer basically look into this more deeply, and they found a number of things that, that were done uh, poorly, could have been done better. You know, the obvious things. That instead of caching data locally, they went they had been going back to the server over and over again. Um, there were some things that could be, do, could be done asynchronously that they were doing synchronously. They didn't do a lazy instantiation, so they, you know, so they were starting things up they weren't using. And these are all tricks that people learn to use. You know, the engineering uh, people that have done this before know how to do this. Um, in fact, you know, you, you look at this list; it's pretty much exactly the same thing they tell you when you build an Eclipse plugin. You know, how, how to avoid extra overhead at startup, etc. So this is what happened with the effort. Uh, they, they got the cold startup time down to 10 seconds and the warm startup time down to 8 seconds. Um, so, you know, that's, that's great for the cold startup, you know, they got rid of a lot of time, but eight seconds is still a really long time to wait to start up an application. And in fact, if you're talking about, you know, things where the user is going to, you know, expects it to be there, pop it up right away, that's, that's infinite, basically, you know, it's like, that will be enough to not, to have people not use your application. And so, there were other things that could be done, and, they, and this were the, the sort of in the list of things that were proposed, but these were large-scale architectural changes to the application. These weren't, you know, I tweaked something here, tweaked something there. This is actually, I have to rewrite uh, the code. I have to think about organizing differently. Things like merging threads, uh, having assemblies merge, et cetera. So, so they, to drill down a little bit more, let's look at some of the things that were happening. Um, so, it turns out that uh, you can read about 1,516 k-byte blocks from disk uh, in, in 10 seconds, at about 6 milliseconds a seat. And in fact, that's the bottleneck that they're running into, basically. You, they're going all over that just finding data you know, that you need to have to start up. It's code, it's, it's metadata, et cetera. Um, and why is it all over the disk? Well, it turns out there's 21 assemblies in this application. So those are the unit of packaging. And in fact, those, are, those assemblies spread over 50 DLLs. Okay? So you've got 50 different files that, that sort of implement this application. And, and to start up, you have to go and touch all those things and bring them into memory. So, so this, is a, this is a case where the programmer's model was to be um, sort of, you know, to factor things a certain way, but then the logical factoring wasn't very good in terms of, uh, in terms of performance, and, and the tension there is, oh, gee, I have to rewrite my code to only have a few, a few DLLs, you know, bring things together more. And the real problem here is that it's very hard for programmers to reason about, and the optimization systems aren't very good at, Talking about the layout of things on disk, for example, you know, do you know when you write a write a, you know an executable out, what blocks of, on the disk those, those, that executable goes to? Are they in a good uh, are they are they in a good location so that when you start it it runs fast? You have very little control. Other things to point out: abstraction hides these very high costs. This is this is a problem with experience. After a while, you start realizing that these things cost a lot. For example, if you do XML serialization, which it turns out in the CLR is a simple attribute, you basically just say something like in a little square bracket, serializable XML or something, something like this. Anyway, you say that, and, and actually what happens is the C-sharp compiler gets invoked because it, uh, the uh, code gets generated. What's that? 
At serialization time? Uh, this is at runtime. Okay. At runtime. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So, so, and, and this is, you know, and, and why is this? It's because the guys who did this said, you know, we want to have something that, that can read and write these serialized, uh, you know, objects really fast. And so we're going we're gonna to generate code on the fly to read and write these things. And we're going to compile that code. And then we're going to eject that code into the runtime. Okay. And, you know, that makes a lot of sense if you're going to use it a thousand times. Okay. But if you're trying to start up an application, you've got a hundred or a thousand different classes that have one of these things. All of a sudden, there's a high cost and the, and the developer may not, you know. So here's a case where you're telling a developer, go, you know, just put that little square bracket thing on the code. But, but on the flip side is, you know, whoa, that, that costs a lot. Um, Okay, and, and, I, and, I, and I would guarantee that these, these points are not unique to head tracks, they're not unique to managed code at all. I mean, it, it, start up some applications, some you know, fairly complex applications that on, any, on, on any client machine, and you'll realize it takes a long time to start up things. Almost all the time you spend waiting for your desktop app, for your, for your, uh, your uh, uh, laptop, uh, all the time you spend waiting is disk. So shouldn't we just throw it to the disk guys and say, make me some magical disk manager that notices that this time when I started up, I touched these 50 different disk blocks and rearrange it. It's not my problem. Um, oh, that's long haul. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some of that is in Mac OS. OK, so, so that's a very good question. I, I, what I'll put on the table is, whose problem is it? And who's, you know, who's solving it? And do, do we need to cooperate to solve it? OK, I would, I would argue my contribution here is, this is a problem. And I don't see, I don't see the research community focusing on it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I missed something here. Why doesn't this go away in the warm thought case? Um, OK, that's a good question, actually. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's see. Uh, yeah, OK, yeah, that's a fair point. So it's a 128 megabyte machine. Yeah, yeah uh, no, that's right, that's right. 128 megabytes, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's all on swap. Um, so, so you just said that the disk was the problem. You <laughs> was XML example. Well, OK, no, there, there are other things. Well, by the time, yeah, the XML is just an indication that there are these abstractions in it. By the time they got to the 10 seconds, all that was gone. You know, they, they, they got rid of all the things. Oh, they did that. Yeah. Okay, so so and I want to talk specifically about this notion of you know building or spur site, building arbitrary system code using a managed language, and what the obstacles are. And in particular, this performance problem is a real problem. I don't think you know you can say oh we've, we've made a lot of progress, but there's still a lot of things left. I'm not going to go into detail because I don't have that much time, and I want to talk about the future. But in particular, I think I/O is a big thing. It's it's been ignored a, a, a lot by the programming language community, partly because Spec and Spec JVM don't really exercise I/O at all, and in fact. You know, uh, you need a fairly complex application to even see the problem. You know, if you run, um, you know, something simple, it's, you're not going to see it. Um, there's a, there's overhead, obviously, and people making good progress there. There's a myth, there's an impedance mismatch in terms of what the developers know. That's going to take time to to sort of uh, to solve. In other words, as as developers get more experienced with these things, they won't make as many uh, errors, quote errors, even though we're encouraging them to use these abstractions. They'll learn which ones to avoid. Um, but you know, there's there's some progress here. I, I would say that uh, you know, in terms of the path, there's a lot of progress to be made here. And I'm not going to focus in terms of the future on this. I, I, I'm not saying that we shouldn't we shouldn't continue to do great work in this area. But I think there's other important things in the future as well. And that's what I'll talk about next. Okay. So I, at a high level, I want to talk about. I want I want you to walk away with the belief that in fact there's really important challenges here, and we're just scratching the surface in terms of talking about taking the current system and making them perform better. Okay, and fundamentally, I think there's um, there are things about our current systems that, that that need to be improved, and in fact have to be improved if you're going to implement something like the Respira site. And so I'll talk about each of these in some detail. We'll see how much time I have, um, and this will lead into a very brief discussion of a, a new project that's going on at Microsoft Research called Singularity, where we're looking at uh, designing an OS from the ground up. Okay, so let's talk about concurrency. Um, you know, this is a huge problem. This is a giant problem. And, you know, why everyone isn't working on it, I don't know. But, you know, we had a great discussion at lunch about this. There are some, there are some good things happening. Uh, chip multiprocessors are here. Intel basically just told the whole world that the multiprocessors, core, multi, uh, 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 multi-core chip processors, what is it? Uh, uh, chip multiprocessors um, uh, are the way that they're going to try to get, you know, better performance. And, and they're going to put two on a, a two, co a two on a core next year. And you know, 2008. Who knows? Four, 16, whatever. Um, but the technology is outpacing the research. You know, how much of research is focusing, you know, dead on on saying, well, we got to get every every ounce of performance out of those two processors. Um, and to do that, we have to write a lot of a lot of concurrent code. Well, how hard is it to write concurrent code? It's extremely difficult to write code that is actually correct 
and multi-threaded, okay? Um, the sharing is a huge problem. The constructs are brittle. They're easy to make mistakes. Um, and so fundamentally, there's this question, what's the right programming model for this, okay? We don't know. I don't think anyone, you know, there's been 40 years or 50, 60 years of work on parallel computing.